Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. Today we're going to dive into Live Arena. I'm up to Silver 4 now, by the way. Been a good bit of time since we've checked in and done a video. Uh, and in this one, I want to sort of focus on giving you some sort of tips and some advice. Because why have I not done a Live Arena video in a good while? Well, this is going to kind of tie into tip number one and some of the broadest aspects of what I'm going to recommend. Uh, I'm basically always picking the same champions now. This is something that has really changed for me, I think. You know, when I first came into Live Arena, uh, I was looking at like all of these different champions and all the different options and strategies. But I've actually come to find, oh, so we've got to watch out. The Torment could definitely be annoying with the speed team. So we want stuff that's going to be good against that. Well, Rotus and Torment. I'm basically always picking the same stuff, right? <laughs> I'm basically always picking the same things and very rarely changing anything. Um, why is that? A couple of reasons. By just picking the same champions, you get, I'd say, sort of three advantages. Number one, it makes it much less stressful. You don't really have to stop and think about stuff much. I'm not sure what he's going to ban, by the way. If I get rid of him, he's got no block debuffs, and we can probably start locking him down reasonably well. Uh, let's get rid of his revive. That should be okay, his proper revive. And we'll go in like this. Cool. See if he actually kind of removes the torment freezes, so we're not too worried. But it just sort of removes the stress, right? You're not coming in and juggling like 50 different champion options. What am I going to pick? What am I going to pick? You're going in and you're basically just picking the same thing every single fight. Makes it much easier to do. Uh, I would actually recommend for most people, roughly speaking, I would say six to eight champions is what you want to aim for. Remember, you're picking five. So I'm saying you want to have maybe a couple extra beyond that. But that's about it. Really trying to keep it simple. Keep things straightforward. Here we go. Let's lock him out. We've locked out most of them. He'll still get this off. The nice thing about Mithrala against Tormund, for us that is, is that Mithrala, although she cleanses, she does put up lots of buffs, which can then get them frozen in turn by Tormund, uh, which can be helpful. So let's see. We acted, Believe it or not, we didn't land a single freeze there, so it didn't happen this time. So that's a little bit unlucky. Uh, but what can you do? um let's uh i don't know are we scared of any of these not really let's just freeze torment i suppose or sleep torment i should say um but yeah something like that and i would recommend out of that probably i would say four or so support champions uh is pretty good about four supports and then i'd be looking for um after that, I'd be looking for mm, probably damage dealers and a variety of affinities is what I'd be looking for. Um, so if you've got void, that's good. It's going to be good against everything. For, let's say you only have, I don't know, spirit nukers. Um, you're going to have a pretty tough time if all of their them are magic affinity champions. You're going to be tough. Like, ah, oh, there's a magic affinity reviver. I'm kind of in trouble now. What do I do? There's nothing I can do, you know? You don't want to get stuck in that situation. All right, let's try to strip off some buffs. Uh, I've sort of broken one of my cardinal rules right here, which is to have a uh, <laughs> have a fast... Um, <laughs> have a fast nuker, which I haven't done. But we'll talk about that in a second. But speed is quite important as well. All right, cool. Let's boost up. Try go quick. If we kill off her... Um, that's the revive gone, and then we can just do whatever the heck we want. So that will make life a lot easier. Uh, let's put this up on Torment. I don't think she'll have the cleanse on time. I think we should get in first. I mean, we'll find out. Oh, we might actually get outsped. Uh, but yeah, I think six to eight champions. Let me know what you think. This fight's going pretty all right. Let's see. Will we kill her? Yes, we will. Lovely. And I think we can basically auto from this point. We'll sleep her just so we don't have any of those shenanigans. Reset their CDs. Yeah, we should be pretty good at this point. He's going to leave the battle and move on. But yeah, so that's sort of tip number one. Tying into it as well, of course, if we're only using a few select champions, we can keep our good gear on them. It's really tough, right? Especially with nukers. If you build too many nukers, you're just not going to have good gear. So for example, I do have, I think Rhonda marked as a live arena champion and she has some good niche usage, right? But... The gear that I've left for her isn't actually that strong. So I don't end up using her all that often, uh, to be honest. So definitely be wary of that. Spreading your gear too thin. Look at what champions am I actually using? All right, well, this is quite an annoying team here. 
Let's go and keep it sort of open for now. We'll see what he's going to pick up. <clears throat> see what he's going to pick. So, yeah, that's sort of what I'd recommend. Um, I really like Spirit Nukers because <laughs> Spirit Nukers are really good right now because Pythion and Duchess are very common. Spirit's good against both of those. I do fight quite a bit of Ultimate Death Knight because I'm first picking Sifi and Harima. There's quite a bit of Spirit, uh, and sorry, quite a bit of Force enemies I'm up against, even Mighty Uko. It's actually quite rare to find Magic Affinity Champions I have found uh, in the arena so far. It's a little bit unusual. Um, let's bring in, let's bring in Karato as a bit of that sleeper pick. He does let me down sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but I think he should be fine here. Let's bring him in. Um, he's got double Harima, which is actually kind of hilarious. Uh, let's probably ban away maybe Ultimate Death Knight. What's he going to do? Um, probably ban away Ultimate Death Knight just because he's going to be quite annoying. Uh... She's going to be quite annoying as well. Let's take let's take him out. He could have stone skin on lots. So this this is going to come down to what's he got stone skin on. Could be kind of sketchy. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but yeah, difficult. Actually, harder to do this video than I expected. Live commenting while picking champions and doing strategy. He doesn't have stone skin on anything. Well, that's good for us. All right, so let's boost up. We've got our spirit champs in here. We go in nuke. Oh, beautiful. And he's he's gone. He's dead. Easy peasy. Lovely. No stone skin, so <laughs> no stone skin, no problem. Karato did like 500 damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Void and spirit nukers work well for me. That being said, I feel if you were earlier in the game, there's probably quite a few more magic affinity champions that people are using earlier in the game. So spirit might actually be weaker. So I think that's sort of a question. What are you running into? Recommendations for budget nukers, by the way. I think Epic Voids are really strong. Skull Crown stands out in particular. It's bringing the Unkillable, which is very strong. Let's bring in, again, the same stuff here. It's just, just picking the same thing, right? I don't want to think about it. Just pick the same stuff. I get, another thing is you get used to the strategy, right? You get used to how your team sort of functions, what you're up against, uh, and then just adjusting a couple of picks at the end. Like, so for me, I'm mostly adjusting my damage or I might swap out the Arbiter pick for something else potentially, but I'm always going to pick Sifi Yumiko because they're OP. Um, like here, this actually looks like a great fight for Rotus. He's got Ronda, which is good against Rotus, but I'm not that worried really. And if he brings in Ultimate Death Knight, I'm going to ban Ultimate Death Knight. I'm absolutely loving Rigash as a fast nuker. This is also something to bring into this as well. Speed teams are really good. I think... One of your biggest priorities, really, with Live Arena is, wow, okay, he's bringing her in. That's interesting. Okay, I think I'll just get rid of the Duchess. Um, do we leave up the two damage? That's, I mean, that's a little bit risky, but I think we just get rid of Duchess. She's probably stone skin with the revive, and we just sort of try blast through. That's real fun. He's bringing in a Glacea, and he's leaving up my uh, Yumiko. One issue is she's a four star. She's going to have accuracy. She could actually end up polymorphing our champions, which would be bad. Um, it could be very bad. Oh, she's in stone skin as well. That's doubly annoying. So let's see if this actually works or not. So, all right, here we go. Yeah, didn't lock him out. He's, he survived the lockout. That's a bummer. Uh, I think we still kill them. That's fine. And we can try to strip his buffs. We strip them a little bit. He can revive, and now we just try kill him again. Let's see what we can do. Hmm, this should be an interesting one. So he has blocked debuffs. Okay, it's fine. Push Ronda back a bit. Am I that scared of any of these guys? Uh, probably not. Like, do I want to kill... I should probably kill one of them at least. Let's kill you, Carl. Let's get rid of him. Not leave both of his damage dealers up and alive. We can sort of slowly kill Rhonda, I suppose. Well, I guess he's going to heal her up. But um, yeah, this looks fine. Yeah, oof, okay. So she's killed him. Uh, I think I'll probably use Sifi's revive. So, okay. Oh, that's she's counterattacking. Well, that's not that's not so good. Let's push his turn meter back. Be a hassle for him. All right, he's thinking about it. He didn't get locked out, so I'm I'm actually loving uh, whatever this girl is called. I can't remember her name, but I love this as a champion. I love this as an idea of a champ. 
Oh, uh, his Rhonda's his Rhonda's causing some trouble. <laughs> She's causing some trouble. I just want to make sure to kill her. <clears throat> there we go. She's dead. Then we can start pushing his turn meter around a bit. It's going to help us some. Start working him down. He should have blocked debuffs, but nothing else. We'll focus on this. Uh, but yeah, I think these speed teams like I'm running here, I personally really like these as well, um, where it's just, you know, yeah, it, it's basically just go fast. <laughs> it's simple as that. Go fast. Bam. Cool. We took him out. Great. We can auto at this point. Go fast. Get fights done relatively quick. Um, I mean, two minutes. It's not too bad, right? You can build tanky teams and go second and, and go really slow and be really tactical. I think there's something to be said for just picking a go first team. Just go in first, go fast, new card, and, and see how it goes, right? I think that's nice, again, for getting through your fights really quickly. I mean, Live Arena, if I was trying to do a slow five-minute slugfest team, would be just kind of miserable. So that's something I don't like to do. Uh, and tying in with that, I do think that speed is probably the best stat in the in the game for Live Arena. Even nukers, I find it's very helpful for nukers to go fast. Whereas for classic or tag arena, I might be running a nuker very, very slow. I'm not going to be doing that in Live Arena. I'm going to be going pretty fast if possible. I think my slowest nuker I actually regularly use, I think Karato might only be 200 speed. He's quite slow, unfortunately. Um... Let's, let's bring him in again. Let's see some Karato. Do we want to see some Karato here? A little bit low on the damage against these guys. We're going to have to ban an Eathway because the block revive, which sucks. Um, could I switch anything up? Not really. I mean, we could bring in Helicath for damage. So that could be one switch up. Would we switch Helicath for Karato here? His damage is lower. He could ban it, which would be pretty bad. We might really struggle to kill double revivers. I'm going to bring in just Karato. Just more damage. That's going to be fine. Uh, and it's fun to see some Karato in action as well. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what he decides to ban. But yeah, most likely here we're going to ban an Eathway. Because the block revive is super nasty. Um, see, it depends what his final pick is. We'll see. Bum, bum, bum. But yeah, I, I think pretty quick nukers are good. Like my uh, Ragash is running maybe 230, 240. Roughly that in the speed. Like he's going pretty quickly. Uh, and I do think that that is, generally speaking, helpful and, generally speaking, the way to go. We could potentially just keep killing this guy, but I'm not sure what he's going to ban. So let's just play it safe and go like this and uh, try wear him down. Um, yeah, get rid of the block revive. I think it's the safest option. Um, I, I do think having an anti-speed champ, if you can, so something like... Uh, Go, man, he's got most of his champs are all nice and protected here. I'm I am gonna go in with the AoE first of all. New Kerr, that's fine. And do I wanna just kill this? Yeah, yeah, I'll just kill her with an A1. That's fine. There we go. Let's try to. Does he have no he doesn't on the Duchess, so we can come in and just A1 the Duchess, try weaken her. Didn't get it. Oh well. <clears throat> um, but yeah, having something like a Tormin, something like a Hegemon to really fluster a go first team is very useful. Having some sort of cut in champion could be good too, like a Valkyrie, uh, or just bringing in something like a Vogoth, right? That can help you survive. That sort of stuff can be really, really good. Ah, uh, yes, of course, we're not able to actually lock him down because of that. Slight bummer. Just start working her down a little bit. We can certainly try to strip that stone skin off of him. We did. That's good. That's certainly helpful. Um, <clears throat> let's work on this Duchess. She's almost dead. Try to panic her into doing some stuff. All right, he's protected her. Fine. Let's see what he's going to do. He probably revives here, and then he tries to block debuffs on his next turn. That seems most likely. Yeah, he's definitely going to do that. The good move. All things considered. Um, I think Sifi has her... Oh, no. Sifi doesn't have her move. Oh, well, that was a bit of a mistake in that case. <clears throat> Let's see what Karato can do. Kaboom. Karato, quite nice. The reason Karato is quite nice is that he ignores um, passive skills. So the 
the passive skills that this guy has going on uh, aren't really protecting, right? So you can see Ragash's damage is being reduced by the number of buffs from the Python passive. Um, and then he's further being reduced by uh, here. I think we do just need to kill the Trunda, just wear her down. Okay. And we'll slowly start working on these guys. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. That just should be actually fairly easy to kill with Ragash. Um, but yeah, ignoring the passives is really good. We ignore the Duchess AoE damage reduction, which is pretty big. We ignore... I'm actually going to give increased attack here so we can sort of rip through. <clears throat> we ignore lots of stuff. His Duchess does seem to be pretty quick, something I'm noticing. There we go. We've killed her again with uh, Karato doing some work. I'll show you the bills at the end of this. All right, let's see if we can strip off these buffs, these protections. All right, get increased speed on us. That's definitely going to help. Weaken, excellent. That's also going to help quite a bit. Um, just going to keep working him down. <laughs> this has been a long fight, unfortunately, this one. <laughs> been a long fight. Ultimate Death Knight slows it down. He's got such a tanky team, but then Trunda. Now, the Trunda hasn't really managed to do much, but it, it really does slow it down, unfortunately. Let's hit him, does some healing, whatever. We're, get, we're getting there slowly, very slowly. We're getting there. If he revives, we do have the Karato AoE back. Um, I'm actually going to drop it right now. Yeah, cool, and kill him. Good, and we can just auto at this point. <clears throat> and he's gone. All right, cool. So going well so far. Last fight here for this video. But I think I've sort of covered everything. Uh, actually, another thing I wanted to point out, we've actually won everything here today so far. We might lose this one. We'll see. Um, but don't be too worried about losing, right? I think it's a big mistake people make with Live Arena is you come in and, you know, you're trying to, you're obviously, you're trying to win. Of course, you're trying to win everything, but really putting a lot of value into that, you know, don't take it too seriously. That's kind of my main piece of advice here. Like, it doesn't matter if you come in and you lose like 10 fights today. It doesn't matter. The world doesn't end. Everything is still fine. Everything's still going. Rotus is actually quite annoying for me to fight against. Definitely don't like fighting against Rotus because he's one of the only Magic Affinity champs out there that we do not like. We'll just stick with our good safe Ragash, though. <clears throat> he might have Seafy as a pocket pick at the end. He might have, uh, again, Ultimate Death Knight. <clears throat> Let's see what he's got. Oh, yeah, he's got, a, he's got a very annoying team. Very annoying. Right, let's bring in... Uh... Bring in our own Rotus, maybe. And I think I might just get rid of his Rotus. That's tough. Either his Rotus or his Uko are very annoying. Um, Duchess is quite annoying as well. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the Rotus. All right, cool. <clears throat> Uko could be a big pain. We might lose this one. Uko, he's picked up the two kind of worst champs or two of the worst champs for me which is Uko and Rotus. Rotus is real annoying for me to deal with because I like the spirit nukers, like I said. And Uko is just always a wild card. You never know what this champ is going to do to you. Now, because we built speed, we hopefully can outspeed him and lock him down. And it's, yeah, it's looking pretty good for that. Let's see if we can <clears throat> kill him. Good, we've got one kill. That's nice. Uh, see if we can steal some of his HP. Cool, and lock him down and nuke. And that's okay. Now, here's the problem. Maybe I should have saved my AoE because we've got nothing really to deal with that. Now, if we remove their... There we go. Perfect. It's going to say if we remove their uh, their things, we're good. We can sleep him. Never mind. Didn't sleep him? Uh, I guess not. Um, I'm just going to kill that guy because ain't nobody got time for that. Um, let's just try to outspeed here. I'm not that scared about Seafy dying, so... Just kill him off. Oh, good. Lovely. This went this went super smoothly. <laughs> I'd be very frustrated if I was him. That was like everything lined up really lucky for us there. We'll take it. And there you go. There were our four fights today. Went really well. Um, and I mean, I don't want to. It's not really the point of this isn't to say like, wow, look, I did well. Not really. Like we're using a lot of overpowered champions. Like I would say Sifi. <clears throat> Rotus, Yumiko are all no question overpowered. 
I would argue that Ragash and Tormin are top tier. Arbiter is top tier really as well. And then Karato is probably the one champ we picked today that people might be like, oh, that's a little bit unusual. Uh, but we do have the, we, we have the Yumiko to combo him with. So you do have that stuff going on. But to show you like the bills and the stuff that's going on. So Ragash quick. I think this is important, right? In terms of the bills, Ragash is quick. He's got pretty decent accuracy as well. And he's good defense and crit damage. He does so much damage. The, the decreased defense and stun are both really useful. Um, he can run polymorph because he has some accuracy. It's just great. And he has these masteries. Absolutely brilliant champion. Love him to bits. He's so good. Uh, we've got Sifi in stone skin. She's overpowered and it's not even funny. Uh, she'll get more defense when we rank her up a little bit. Might switch her blessing. I don't really know. Um, and she has these sort of masteries. Arbiter has these masteries and she's in my fastest gear. Funny thing is my fastest gear isn't that quick compared to my compatriots. Like <clears throat> it's some of my most frustrating losses. I go in an Arbiter with a 30% speed aura. So with that aura, she's running something like 390-ish speed and then getting totally outsped by a Sifi with a no speed aura. You're like, wow, that Sifi is like 400 speed. I'm here with 360 is my best speed. You just lose those, you know, and you just move on. You just go, okay, well, we lost that one. That's annoying, but move on. Uh, Rotus, he is coming in like this. Uh, so again, very quick, 248. He's got tons of speed. Probably could drop that speed for more damage, but I don't think I actually have the gear for more damage. But if I could drop his speed for more damage, I would. These masteries. Karato has these masteries. Karato masteries are weird because of his passive. His passive is what makes him good. Damage inflicted cannot be decreased by enemy passives or masteries. And damage by him cannot be increased by masteries or passives. That's why his masteries are weird. And that's what makes him good, right? Ignoring um, ignoring passive, ignoring Harima, ignoring Pythion passive, ignoring Duchess passive. All that stuff really makes a difference and helps a fairly mediocre damage dealer actually be pretty strong sometimes. His gear is not too crazy, but 6.7k attack. His attack's quite high. His speed's a bit low, and his crit damage a little bit low. But uh, yeah, that's Karato. Yumiko is just running fairly fast and high accuracy with these masteries. And then finally, Tormin. He's running with Helm Smasher. I do like the damage Tormin with a Sifi. 6k defense, 248%. He has high accuracy, but he's got low speed. So we'd probably want to tweak that, get his speed a bit higher, get that extra 1% crit rate and maybe drop his accuracy down to like 350 or 300-ish. It's still good enough for most cases. But like I said, we used seven champions today. That's sort of bang on the six to eight champion recommendation. Yes, we're using really overpowered champions, but do the same thing for you. Choose your best champions that you have. If they're OP, like a Sifi, then great. If they're not, do the best that you can. Put your best gear on them, like I have with Sifi, obviously. And... um yeah, there you go. Like I said, spirit. You can see I've got, what, three supports right here, and I'm just picking the same ones. And then I've got four different nukers that I'm I'm rotating in. So we actually pretty much bang on followed the advice here. And also, find, just to show you, I've already removed some champs with arena tags, but, like, I have so many champions tagged for arena. And again, like, it's just being overly ambitious. I just don't end up using most of them. Most of them I just never use. Uh, even in like the super niche circumstances where like Turvold or Rhonda are good, because they're not really built for it, I'm not really using them much anymore. I've got all of the bottom champions I've, I own are in here. I do use them occasionally, but not very much, you know? Like you could really not build a lot of these champions and be just fine. So yeah, I'll probably even trim that those, those markers down, to be honest. But thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you found it interesting. And uh, yeah, let me know any strats that you have for Live Arena. I'm curious to hear, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.